<laughs> anyway, folks, you're live with Lonzo and Dusty. It's Tuesday. Uh, in yeah, depth, buddy. Lonzo, Dusty, what else we got, Doc? Yo, Nightbree wants to know, yo, Lonzo, what were your initial reactions to the Niggas for Life album cover and always into something music video? I ain't really paid that much attention to it. I was busy back then. Yeah, I was going to say, you probably, yeah, you probably, you were making money, huh? I, I was busy. That's shit. Um, I thought it was crazy, man, the, the name of the album, Niggas for Life. You know, that was something I always thought was kind of interesting. But um, that's the one with them with the art, cartoon characters on the front. I think they were looking down. Yeah, yeah. I think they were looking down. They were all in a circle, I do believe. Oh, yeah. and they were looking down. And, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I do. Yeah, it wasn't too. Yeah. I, I don't do that. Back then, I didn't. I wouldn't. You know, they they was cool, but I was busy. Shit. You know, I tell people, people, man, when you man, they left. They, nigga, they left me with a hit record. Shit, I was busy in the motherfucker. I did not have time to um, gloat. I, I I went to my little depression for a minute, and I started hitting the road again. So. My life changed dramatically real quick. Someone wants to say, ask you, talk to us about the day you went to trial for Dr. Dre. Went to trial for Dr. Dre? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. Did you ever go to trial for Dr. Dre? Trial for Dr. Dre. We'll now they're probably just thinking about when you bailed him out, maybe. They're probably just talking about when you bailed him out. Oh, that was I, the probably... I just sent the money to his folks. I never had, I never had to go to jail to get him out. Trial for Dr. Dre. Let me see here. Trial. I didn't go to no child. I bet they're thinking. I'm sure they're thinking about when you bailed him out for a second. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm just guessing. I got sued by the nigga. Um, I, we didn't go to trial, though. Um, no, I can't recall going to trial, Doc. No. i only been in a couple of cases. Yeah. And uh, that Dre, uh, Fat Fat's case, my own shit. You know, doing a shit I had to, I, I was to defend it. <laughs> Trying to keep my ass at home. Shit, I don't know. It's all, all good. Right, well, there you go. Someone, uh, yeah. Someone else says, uh, where did you, where did Lonzo get his jewelry from back in the day? Man, uh, you know, it was funny, dude. That was a good thing about crackheads. They had all the latest shit. <laughs> I hate to say it. Granny had all, had all the ladies shit. It was cheap, too. Um, you know, um, being a businessman owning a studio, people would come by, man, I ain't got no cash, but I give you this right here. And a lot of my stuff, I would take it and melt it down and get it made to something else. So I was all, I was like the, like them jewelers. I'll take the scrap jewelry and turn it into a, to a piece. This piece right here on my neck is about a couple of bracelets and some rings. In fact, I was going through my uh, stash box of the day, and I ran across two of my pieces. I got my original star with the muscles on it. I got the original star from World Class Wrecking Crew, and I also had another little man I had made for Miss Link Entertainment. He had a little bomb on him. It was a uh, it was a man holding a bomb, and the bomb had some sparks. Sparks broke off of it, and a couple of the diamonds fell out of it. But um, I usually, man, you know, people would you know come through. Hey, man, I got this right here. Give me this right here, you know, and uh, that was one of them byproducts of the uh, of the uh, crack era. You know, folks would sell shit too cheap, and I bought some downtown LA. I was usually buy a lot of stuff from downtown LA, but all that stuff, I uh, you know, that was in the early days, and I took a lot of this and melted it down and had it reconfigured to something else. And then uh, I stopped wearing jewelry a lot. The only thing I really wear is just every once in a while, I wear this every day, but my other stuff I don't even wear. It don't even excite me no more. I didn't want, I don't I don't need the attention, man. I don't want the jacket's attention. I don't want the, I don't exactly. even want that attention, dude. What well, I gotta prove to somebody, I'm already me. It wasn't what I throw my little yeah. L ring. Yeah, for real. This flew over my head just a few Go minutes ahead. ago. Go ahead. Oh. Oh, you throw your okay, okay. Yeah, uh it, this flew over my head just a few minutes ago, but uh, Brent Johnson says, Wait, what, Dr. Dre sued you? Yeah. Is that what you said? Oh, I don't think we talked about that. Maybe we did. Can you uh, talk, I put out talk a record. about it? Um, we had two records, two compilation albums we did back in the 80s, 90s. One was called uh, Concrete Roots. The other one was called uh, First Round Knockout. And it was basically productions that he had done. Dre had, he had done a lot of production for a lot of different people. And I, we just collected them and put them on a compilation album. And one of them did very well and uh, never had a problem. Didn't have no, no peep out of nobody. 
Then about two or three years later, we did a two years later, we did another one. And that's something that's not a week before we got hit with a lawsuit. They saying we was trying to fool the public. And uh, cause that's when he believed in death row. I wasn't aware he was leaving death row, but they tried to say we tried to fool the public and got caught up in some bullshit and uh, took about a year and we finally settled. And uh, I lost a bunch of money. I mean, it, all the money came out of the distribution. I didn't, I didn't lose no personal money, but the money I was supposed to make, I didn't get. And it just, it was just really a fucked up time for me. I was really pissed about that too. Really, really pissed because it could have been worked out, but you know, folks don't talk to you. So you don't get that, uh, you don't get a chance to even, Hey man, what's the problem? What, you know, what we gotta do to make this happen? But you know, sometimes, you know, lawyers don't want you to resolve shit. They want to resolve it for you. Damn. Yeah, that's yeah. We may have talked about that, but it doesn't ring a bell. I don't um, talk about it, man, because I, I, yeah. I don't. I don't even want the hassle of even getting pissed off. Just you me. saying that, you already know you're gonna get a couple comments or some bullshit. Yeah, and you were yeah. very respectful. You know, what I'm saying it's not like you were. No, nah, I just, I just leave it alone, Doc. Someone says, "Uh, what do you know about Frosty Free? Frosty Free? Frosty Free? I think that was the brother. The ice cream spot? Oh, uh, Frosty Free was a rapper." Oh, okay. he was a rapper from back in the day. I think he's the one who went to jail, if I ain't mistaken. A Frosty, I think he might have been in that group with Flash. Um, if it's the same Frosty Freeze, I know that was a uh, MC Frosty that was rap- rap- rapping with uh, Flash back in the day. But I don't, I ain't seen none of these guys in decades, man. Uh, Rob wants to know when did Toddy T and Mixmaster Spade bust? Oh, they were some of the first ones to bust. Um, Spade had one beat, this genius love beat. He would change the rap every other week and come up with a new tape. And then uh, Toddy T tell you, he man, shit. Um, it, he was getting clowned because he was, um, um, Spade was making money on them takes, man. And he was clowning Toddy, and Todd had skills, but you know, then he started rapping about the battle ram and that blew up. And it was just, it was, it had to be around, I don't know, man, I'll start me lying. Um, 81 something like that i don't know dude i don't really remember i know it was it was early it was early cast out of compton that's for damn show i think they had made record that we was doing bootlegs first for anybody but they made a street record for anybody in fact and this is some real shit right here nwa when they were talking about um in the movie straight out of compton and they was talking about um uh making street rap they were referring to a toddy t and Mixed Master Spade was doing reality raps. That was that they were referring to that stuff. Okay. Wow, safe to say that they're probably were his biggest inspiration, or they were NWA's biggest inspiration. Very much so. There, there was nobody else that was even close to him. You know, Tidy T had a good song, the Battle Ram, and then uh, Spade had he had a different kind of flow. He would almost be singing. And I'm you know, ready to ride. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm ready to ride. <laughs> You know, he a genius of love flow. That was his thing, man. So, you know, it just he was, and he was a super cool dude, man. He was spade was super cool. I hate when he got killed, man, on that motorcycle. Yes, mm. sir. I went to his funeral. Yeah. We have a couple minutes left, Lonzo. You mind if I drop uh, if I play my uh, fifty second drop that I uh, did for the show? Go for before it. We wrap it up. Let's Go do it. This is a drop that I just recorded about the Godfather of West Coast hip hop, Alonzo Williams. Hope you guys enjoy it. West Coast and East Coast hip hop, our origins, our stories are totally different. Everybody on the West Coast, in order to get a record deal, you had to start your own record company. Shout out to the Grandmaster. Let's take it back to when the party flyers were plastered. The movie said he's an arrogant bastard, but if his name ain't mentioned, your story of hip hop is backwards. The pioneer chopping down trees, better believe he's the one who brought Dr. Dre to ease. There probably wouldn't be no easy E if he didn't introduce Eric Wright to Jerry. Present records in the 80s. Turn off the lights, probably produced a couple thousand babies. World class wrecking crew had all the girlies going crazy. Lonzo and Thong draw shaking it for the ladies. There probably wouldn't be no ice cube. All due respect, but there wouldn't be a lot of you dudes. Pay homage, respect the legend. Rest in peace to easy. I know he's smiling down from heaven. And there you have it, folks. Much love, Dusty. I'm going to go out like I've been going. I've been getting used to this now. I'm going to drop my little line right quick. Do it, baby. 
Some of y'all may have never heard of me, but I'm the first one to put Dr. Dre in the surgery. Stuck Ice Cube in the freezer and made him cold on the eve after dark Center Stage Super Bowl. Some of y'all don't know my history. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some of y'all, my history is deeper than you'll ever know. Just remember that NWA stands for Not Without Alonso. Yes, sir. Mike See you next Trump. week, man. Much love, folks. See y'all in the chat room. We're out of here, y'all. Peace.